Can you hear me? Yeah, cool. Okay, uh, so thank you for this short but meaningful spot to talk about the stuff we've been working on and we love to work on. Um, you know, my initial pitch for the talk and the script and the idea was to give a full deep dive into the WebAssembly Threads API on how we use it and whatnot, but you know, <clears throat> this is a lightning talk now, so it's gonna be a short and sweet pitch about our use case for it, which I feel is somewhat quirky and unique, a little bit less after sitting in this room for the whole day, actually. Um, my name is Roberto, and I don't really have a lot of time to talk about myself, so please do come talk to me later if you feel like it. Um, so I do work for a company named StackBlitz, and we are in the online ID business, which is just a fancy term for saying doing your programming in the browser instead of using, say, Vim and a locally installed tool chain. Um, there are several ways you could go about this. Perhaps the most obvious one is the one I'm calling here thin clients, which is, you know, just use your browser as a poor man's SSH client connected to a full development environment hosted on the cloud, um, call it a day. This actually works well within its set, within its set of trade-offs and it's a, very, it's a very popular option. You might be less familiar with, well, I don't know, with the idea of playgrounds, because it's something that mostly only front-end JavaScript developers get to enjoy to its full extent, which is by virtue of, you know, you've, be, you've seen playgrounds for many different tools and compilers that run on the web, but, you know, deploying code, if you're a front-end, pure front-end developer, deploying code is, might be as simple as taking your code and putting, a, putting it on an iframe and just, you know, seeing it run. So by build, you can build, and you've seen it, in, you've seen many of these, um, you can build a self-contained browser app leveraging some clever cross-window communication where you can do your whole programming if you're strictly about front-end development. You can edit, debug, etc., strictly within the confines of that app. And this is, this is actually what StackBlitz was about until recently. We were sort of a playground competitor, but not so much of that lately. Um, we've been trying to do another spin, give it another spin. Um, so I'm sorry, but I'm going to drop a wouldn't it be nice, wouldn't it be nice to combine the strengths of these two approaches? So a, a remote machine is obviously much more versatile because it can run arbitrary code. It's not just doing front-end JavaScript. But on the other hand, playgrounds do have their advantages. For one, you don't need a persistent network connection and, you know, a remote machine for them to work. But also, I would argue that by owning the whole life cycle, like editing, running, debugging, deploying, you have the opportunity of providing a much more coherent, wholesome, let's say better user experience. So there is something there to be explored. And you know, since you're in this room, you kind of see that I'm where I'm going. We're talking about running, taking that idea, but running arbitrary code within the confines of that self-contained browser app. And that is what StackBlitz is about today. We released something called Web Containers two years ago, which is an answer to this question or this dilemma. And we've been refining this technology ever since, and it's in production. Um, so how is this even possible? Well, this is something, this is a rhetorical question more adequate for other audiences, but yeah, you know, this is somewhat possible. But you, this feels like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole, where the square peg is this, well, something, something that looks like POSIX, so I can run a full development environment, and the round hole is the browser. But if you squint really hard, the pieces are kind of there already. So you could map user processes, user spawn processes to web workers, which have been around forever. You have shared memory, so you could provide 
a shared file system to all these workers so they all see the same thing and share the same state. And you know, if you want to go beyond basic things and you want to do some, for instance, meaningful server-side development, well, you're going to need some kind of networking stack. But you have a, the service, wor service workers API on browsers that give you some level of control over their networking and that allow you to build set stack to some capacity. So the pieces are kind of there. But this is not only about being possible, however, however unlikely, it's also about it being practical. Because you know, at the end of the day, we're a product company. And if this is not practical to use, we don't care. Um, if users don't use, it, don't use it, why bother? The road to hell is paved with many cool tech demos that went nowhere, and we don't want that. So, and I would, I would actually argue that this starts, this, the focus on being practical starts with these choices, which, with, which are somewhat obvious, but you are actually setting yourself for a trade-off, because you are giving away control by letting the browser do its thing, but you get in return performance because these are tons of emulation layers that you don't have to write and maintain yourself and would subtract from the experience. So you are, you know, it starts from the moment that you try to choose primitives that map some, somewhat closely their native counterparts. But also in this vein, this is why, for instance, we focused only on JavaScript code for now. Obviously, WASMGC is knocking on, on our door, but you know, we can, you know, we can leverage the existing virtual machine. And it's still, we feel it like it's still a meaningful push forward from the status quo because you can write arbitrary server-side JavaScript. It's not only about front-end dev, pure front-end dev. So, you know, targeting Node.js, the main server-side runtime for JavaScript. And this is also, this focus on being practical is what drove us at the end of the day to WebAssembly and Rust because we discover something that is quite evident, maybe, which is that this low, if you're going to build these low-level components, uh, you know, performance is key. And well, at the end of the day, it's, Rust is a much better language to write these things on. It just fits better. Um, so I would give you a full rundown of how WebAssembly threads work. But I'm skipping that, and I'm jumping straight into the field report, which is somewhat boring, because it just kind of works. I'm going to gloss over this, but you know, these are examples from the web containers code base, where we just use the logical primitive uh, that comes to mind, and it kind of works already. So I'm sticking the current working directory and the controlling TTY of a process on, thread log on a thread local from the standard Rust standard library, and that just works. I'm pulling a mutex from parking lot, a lazy cell from one cell, because I need to do something with static memory in this case, and it just works. And for those weird cases, we, found some, we find sometimes where we need to interact with the browser event loop, which is, happens more often than I would like to, we can actually leverage the uh, async machinery and use a, an async executor built in Wasm Bindgen, and it just works. So it's it does have this out-of-the-box feeling to some extent. This is not to say everything is being wine and roses. Uh, I like to say that we are browser stress testers, um, and we've run into our own share of walls, a wall being a bug in a browser API, or maybe more relevant, the WebAssembly runtime implementation itself, or maybe some limitation of the Rust slash WebAssembly tooling. But you know, it's kind of cool that we've explored these corner cases and reported back. You know, it's a nice way to contribute, I guess. And you know, we do have a wish list of things that would make, would make our lives way easier, starting with GC, of course. But there are less flashy things in this list that I, feel, I felt that it would be nice to highlight so you know, people know about them. They're all being worked on. We know that. But you know, they're less flashy, so I wanted to give them a chance. So that's pretty much it. Um, I think you should give web containers a try, because you might be pleasantly surprised of what they're capable of. Uh, let, me, let me see. Oh, no, not Node. Yeah. 
Yeah, it works. So do come talk shop with us if you feel like it, and thank you for sticking with me until so late. <laughs>